Like a wise man once said, when life gives you a closed beta, expect it to be wank. <laughs> What's good, my fellow peasants? Uh, so yes, F15 comrades, it's sunk, it's flopped, it's flurperderped, it's fallen over. So for two days, or actually no, this is the third day that it's been out now, there have been constant, uh, unrelenting server issues that range from being able to just saying unable to join and then you can try again, to server errors, to completely just glitched out, you're still trapped in the menu, but you can't actually get into a party and you have to re reload the entire application and start again. And for anyone who's played 15, the load menus, they can be savage. Um, so really not fun, really bad rollout, and it's it's a real shame because even with when I was playing it, I was able to get in a couple of hours uh, during all of this. I'll just say this isn't for everyone. There have been some people saying I haven't had issues. So I don't know if it's based on region, if they have even divided these servers up by region. Have Niflheim and Lucis servers and you'd hop between. I, I don't know if any of those are regional, but long story short, Square Enix have acknowledged that the uh, servers are bad. It isn't some glitch in the matrix or, and we don't just all have peasanty PCs. Uh, it is an issue on their end and they're going to be re-releasing the beta on the 11th and 13th. So a second round or an update if you like. And uh, the reason I say it's a real shame and I, I kind of feel bad about opening with this video but just to keep people in the news. There's a hell of a lot to be excited about in this DLC. A hell of a lot. I, I was very dubious about this car. I, I went from being hype to dubious and now I'm just straight back up to hype because even in the couple of hours I played I'm not going to be talking about story or combat in this that's going to be a later video and trust me it needs its own video because there are some crazy exciting details especially on the story front at this DLC is staged um, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it it's dark world people this is our dark world I'm going to be going into way more depth as to why this is our dark world <clears throat> what they've started laying up and also a theory <laughs> the reason I'm not actually that mad about these server crashes is because in the hours of mind-numbing and soul-destroying um, waiting for these servers to fix themselves trying to get into the queue I was actually able to pick up a theory I actually was staring at something and the longer I stared at it and the hours ticked on I hit a theory guys. I'm so excited about this and this isn't one of Pez's far-fetched ones. This is going to be something that you look and you go, Oh! Oh, he's right! Oh shit! <laughs> well, at least that's what I hope anyway. Um, so that'll be coming up uh, in a video soon as well as talking about the story. Now, just looking on the internet, there's nothing out from what I can see yet as to what was co causing these server issues. Uh, there was a notification on the game and on the website that they were experiencing extremely high traffic. Now, I kind of thought, oh, is that just, no, the default? Was that actually the issues? Uh, I actually, first of all, started speculating that it might be DDoS. 14 is still getting its booty pounded by that DDoS attack, and that came out of Stormblood. So, that was just for that release. I thought, whoever's doing this DDoS attack, have they gone for 15 comrades? Shut that shit down. Because while I am no Asian hacker... Don't raise it! <laughs> Wait, is that is that racist to say? Well, I don't know. I don't see why that would be. So it's saying that Asian people are more technically, technologically competent than we are. Perhaps calling them cyber criminals might be. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. I, I am no expert, but I always and I kind of thought if that no these DDoS attackers, if it's a specifically a Square Enix or a Final Fantasy thing, if they can do the, the FF14 servers right over like they have. Something like this closed F15 beta would be easy and this kind of made me worry for things like Dissidia in the future. And I mean that's not just DDoS attackers because it looks like there's been no statement that's a DDoS attack. It seems like Square are going to be doing some sort of update to fix it. So that kind of makes me think that it is their fault. Perhaps they underestimated the traffic. I mean that would be the best option that you know there's a hell of a lot more people interested in this multiplayer beta than uh, even 50, uh, Square Enix anticipated. I think that that's not likely. I think that Square Enix have probably just I don't know just as bad as it sounds just dropped the ball somewhere because somebody asked me in the chat Pez are you at all surprised and I actually had to go no oh god I'm not no I'm not surprised at all in fact before they released this I I kind of anticipated issues like this. I mean, I'm not going to be negative because I'm really hyped for this DLC and you guys will see why. Um, but it just seems like Square Enix can't get much right these days. Um, and I don't want to blame them if, if it wasn't their fault, but likely they was. 
Um, you know, they know what was happening. They should have been able to predict roughly what kind of numbers, even just based on season passes alone. But that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Hopefully, uh, this update. Again, coming 11th, fixes this comrades up. And for anyone who's just kind of sat here on the fence, should I get it pairs? Should I not? Before I do any of my story videos explaining uh, the combat, because I really want to get detailed with this because there's some really cool details. Um, I'd say it's not worth reinstating your PlayStation Plus. Even just from what I've seen, this is a very bare bones beta. So even the avatar system, I mean, just look at it. You have literally like two hairstyles. Everyone's character more or less looks the same. You know, you're either just pretty much a skinny or plumper variation. Now, now not to hit on the avatar system, uh, it's actually really detailed. The, the level of detail you can go into, um, sort of with eyes and, you know, proportions and arms and noses and shit. You're really going to be able to make some pretty much, I hope, any appearing character you want. So if you want to recreate Iris and Luna, of course, all they need to do is get more hair, which will be in the final version. Also, things like more outfits um, and details, maybe more tattoos and scars and other bits and pieces like that. Slight concern is that you know, people have been saying that some of those are going to be in-app purchases. I'm seeing that term more and more in-game purchase what's the word i'm looking for microtransactions uh, i'm seeing that a lot more so i do think they will be in there hopefully it's just cosmetic and vanity but the other reason i'm going to say it might not be worth you know, getting a playstation plus subscription or the season pass just for this it is it's pretty limited on the number of quests now they are really fun uh, and by all means try them out if you want to but i'm just getting a lot of people ask pairs should i actually pay to get uh, this beta version i'm just going to say it's not quite up to scratch yet either server wise content wise but and i'm shocked to be saying this this is the most excited i have now been for a dlc and i've been super excited for episode gladiolus ignis and prompto but for this from what i've seen and for what i i I'm speculating that will be coming up ahead. This is going to be an amazing DLC, guys. So there it is. And once again, a uh, breakdown on exactly what this DLC is, what you can expect, what it has to offer, what I speculate is to be, why I'm so buzzing for this, and a really dank, crazy theory that will penetrate your mind. Until the next video. Goodbye.